Liam, um, just before we talk about the break and, and how you know effective and useful that's been for you, or perhaps not, um, just a, a word on Troy Trapara, of course, uh, made two appearances, um, you know, internationally. And is that a good thing for you that he's getting that experience um, and maybe not full games, so he can come back? He's gone had a bit of football and he can come back and play for you, you know, in the in the game uh, on Saturday. Yeah, a few things on that. I think it, you know, it's obviously. It's a sign how well he's done to get called up in the first place. Uh, I think I've said it before, you know, and representing your country, you know, is, is a, an extremely proud thing that, you know, for him, for his family. So to be able to go away, you know, the level of some of the players they've got uh, is also going to help him develop as a player and expose him to, you know, guys that are at a really high level. So that'll only, that'll only make him a better player and a better person, I think. Um, obviously, yeah, seeing the number of minutes, you know, not great for him, but probably great for us in the fact that, you know, he comes back a little bit fresher. So... Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of players going away representing their countries. I think is a big part, uh, you know, of, of their careers. So we, we're fully supportive of that. Um, and then it's a case of obviously assessing where he's at. He's come back. He's you know he's in a good place at the minute. So uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a good good week for him. And for you and for the side, um, it's always quite useful to have that kind of extended period of break after a good result, I suppose. But so so were you happy with the break that you've had? I say break, you know what I mean by break. Uh, you won't go to break, you'll be training, but the, the period of time off maybe to train, or would you have preferred just to, to go into another game after the defeat? I think there's two ways of looking at it, right? I think it, you know, when you, I think it's about not getting too high or too low, depending on the result. Obviously, we were all extremely disappointed after, you know, Doncaster not to come away with something. And, uh, you know, I think what we can't then do is, you know, panic and, you know, go and punish the lads for what happens that day. I think, you know, they've done so well in the, you know, the eight, nine weeks that we've been here that, you know, I think when you look at the course of the season, how intense it is, how many games there are, you know, for me it was uh, same as when we were winning games, reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, what do we need to improve, what do we need to get better at. Uh, we used it as an opportunity to give the lads, you know, a short break to switch off. I think that's, you know, the rest, the recovery, the, you know, that decompressing in terms of in their heads and physically allows them to recover. Uh, so we gave them a few days off and then we've had a really strong training week. So I think, like I said, it's, it's not getting too carried away with the defeat at Doncaster. We're still learning as a group, uh, staff, players, the collective. So we're, we're still using you know, the, these training weeks that we get to make sure that you know, things that happen at Doncaster we can learn from to be better uh, when we go into them similar situations in the future. And you, you've talked quite a bit about culture and it's a, it's a, it, you know, it's a big part of, I think, um, what you tried to bring to the club, uh, a culture, and that goes, I presumably, from the way that the players conduct themselves in and around the place as human beings, as well as um, the way that they play football. Um, and so when you're in a situation where you're actually doing very well, the, the side are playing good football, you've come in, I suppose part of that culture, part of what you've got to teach them, is not to take anything for granted. That's also part of the culture that you've talked about. No, definitely, and I think that you know the the way we work and you know the sort of the processes we follow are, have to be consistent. We can't, when we're winning games, get too high and just show good things. You know, for me, it's 100%. We'll show you know reinforce positives of what looks good, um, but we also go right. How do we still improve? And again, I think that's you know what what you then get is that level of consistency with the players. So I think what we have to have is a culture of development in terms of the team individually, collectively around. You know, if we want to get where we want to get to, we have to continuously look to get better uh, and that's irrespective of the result to a certain extent I think just how you teach and how you coach you know tweak slightly I'm probably a bit more moody I think uh, actually when we win because it, it scares me that people become complacent and uh, you know get carried away so I think you know we, it, we, we've, I think we've done a, a relatively good job of staying fairly level st fairly consistent so uh, we'll approach obviously the weekend the same. We've done everything we can. Nothing's changed just because of the result at Doncaster. Everything's been the same in terms of the preparation and what we do to get ready for tomorrow. And I, I think questions like the one I'm about to ask are going to are going to fade away because um, you're you you know fast establishing yourself as the head coach of MK Dons, even though you, you, you know, you've only been here this season. But you you must be enjoying yourself. I mean, genuinely, I know it's not a question that managers get asked or head coaches get asked very often, but you, you must be having a, a working hard, yes, but enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, I have to say, I think that of the mindset, I feel really fortunate, obviously, to work in the game as well. You know, I think we're, you know, we're in privileged positions to, you know, have the jobs that we do in in football and you know do something that we're so passionate about. So. 
you know, I, I think what, what's difficult when you're in it day to day is not to get completely wrapped up into it. Uh, I have to say the staff around me are great, uh, you know, sometimes going, you know what, we're lucky people. And I think what that then does is just that constant reminder. Uh, and I also think, you know, if you're enjoying what you do, you come in, if you're passionate about it, you, you're going to deliver better. You know, and I think that's the same for the players. If they come in, they look forward to coming in, they look forward to training, they, you know, I think they're then going to learn more and they're going to perform at a higher level. So it's finding that, that right balance, you know, in the program of what's for them, what's for us. I think that's really important. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope to continue. I'm just thinking, going back to the question about culture and looking to show you um, we talk about not being complacent. You could have looked at the game against Doncaster and thought, well, you know, they're, they're in the league position that they are. You know, that's going to be a winnable game. That's going to be a game um, that we, we might take three points from. Uh, same applies to Shrewsbury. You know, don't do that. Don't don't look at those teams at the bottom of the table and think, you know, that they're going to be, you know, nailed on three points. No, definitely not. And and I don't think we did that at Doncaster. I didn't get the feeling that we went in being complacent and carried away thinking it was going to be easy. I think the, the big learning, I think, from that was around managing momentum. And I think what we have to do is, like I said about the group learning, you know, perspective of last season was such a freakish year, obviously, in terms of no fans. So when we talk around momentum in football matches, there wasn't really any, apart from sort of tempo and transitions in game, I think fans can really create momentum for you know, for teams and for players. And we knew that Doncaster that day would come out and get after us. It was then, you know, so a relatively new experience for some of the guys to actually experience that with, you know, a few thousand fans getting behind the team. So I, I, I don't think there's any easy games in this league. I think every single, the second you're 2% off it or you carry two or three players, you, you won't win football matches. So I think the, the message is consistent. All of us have to be focused. All of us have to be ready to go. Uh, all of us, uh, you know, need to understand that the fans will get behind them, and you know that's something that we have to make sure that we control and we manage, and that we uh, uh, are able to then shift the momentum back on us so that we can control the football match. What do you feel about Shrewsbury? Tell us a little bit about uh, Shrewsbury. Yeah, difficult. I think you know when you look at it, I think you know well, well set up, well organised. You know, you saw that we we saw them against Ipswich last week, so. Uh, well organised, you know there was moments where actually they they got on the front foot. They actually you know played the ball quite well, uh, good energy. So you know we're we're expecting you know a really difficult game in terms of you know their their organisation, their their intensity, they work at. I have to say if if you if you look at their performances, you know arguably they could have picked up more points when uh, when, when you see how how well they've done in certain games. So we know it's going to be a real a real stretch. We have to be a, a, a you know full tilt to make sure that we are uh, we're able to go and perform and win. Thanks, Liv. Perfect. Empty treatment room, Liam. That must be really pleasing for you at the moment. Yeah, no, we've a uh, relatively uh, full bill of health at the minute. We, you know, cut a couple of tweaks at, uh, in the last few days, which um, not ideal. They're being assessed at the minute just to see where people are at. Um, but uh, the, the great thing is when I look at it, it gives me a, a terrific headache in terms of who plays. And I think that flipping it back onto the players, which I like to do, it, it comes down to them and. Uh, they'll only be better players if they're able to compete with each other. So I think that's the, the biggest challenge I put at the group. It's really difficult for me to pick a team uh, and leave people out. Obviously, I look at it from the collective and the team angle of what does the team need this weekend. Uh, and, yeah, for me, it's putting it back on the players to go, you know, hit, hit, train every single day to your maximum. When you get your opportunities, make sure that you grab them. You obviously don't want players walking around with their, their heads down, but I suppose you also don't want people quite happy to, to be out of the team, do you? You want... How do, you, how do you manage the, the, the difference between the disappointment of being left out but also that drive then to, 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 to want to get back into the team? I think it comes down to a couple of bits. I think communicating with the players is key. I think, you know, having discussions with them, what they need to do uh, in order to get where they want to get to. I think, you know, there's an understanding if you do walk around and you don't apply yourself properly or your head's down, then you actually get further away from what you, uh, the goal is that you want. So I think it's, it's, you know, it's being open, it's being honest with the players. It's not around game playing, it's telling them the truth. You know, they might it might be difficult to hear in the short term, but I think they'll have you know more respect and then be able to channel their actions into you know tr trying to impress to get back in the team. So, yeah, they're they're the key things probably. Having so many options all over the pitch, though, must be must be great for for, for a head coach to have. Yeah, it, it's great from a, a team selection point of view. Not not great for going to sleep at night. I can assure you that. Um, but no, it's, it. it what it, what it allows us to do is, even during the game, um, you know, make strong changes. I think that's the, the big thing as well. We're, we're able to make changes that will have an impact uh, on the game and on the team. So, uh, every, 
reiterate what I probably said a million times this season and keep reiterating. I think every, everybody's going to be needed, whether it's now, whether it's in a week, whether it's in a month. You know, the, the, the squad has to be strong. Everybody has to be fully on board with what we're trying to achieve at this football club. And, you know, I think we've got that in the group at the minute. I think we have got a really strong group of characters and individuals that are that are in it together. And I think, you know, they're able to, to channel that emotion uh, to, to make sure that, you know, the team that starts on a Saturday is uh, in the best place possible.